So Scott Summers is the oldest son of Major Christopher Summers, who was a test pilot in the US Air Force. And his younger brother is Alex, who is known as the Mutant Havoc. When Scott and Alex were boys and were flying home from a family vacation in their father's vintage private plane, a scout ship from an alien empire suddenly materialized and set the plane ablaze. Catherine pushed Scott and Alex out the plane door with the only available parachute. The parachute caught fire, so Scott used his mutant optic blasts for the first time to slow their descent. Scott suffered a head injury on landing that damaged the part of Scott's brain that would have enabled him to control his optic blasts. The two boys were hospitalized and both suffered traumatic amnesia regarding the incident. The geneticist, who happened to be Mr. Sinister, took an interest in the boys. He believed that Scott was the Summers brother with the most potential, so he had Alex adopted to separate them and render Scott emotionally vulnerable. One night, Scott woke up and destroyed the roof of the hospital with his optic blast, which injured him. When Scott woke up again, a year had passed. Upon recovering, Scott was placed in the state home for foundlings, an orphanage in Omaha. There he was subjected to batteries of tests and experiments by the orphanage's owner, Mr. Milbury, an alias for Mr. Sinister. Sinister placed mental blocks on Scott and took on the role of Lefty, who was Scott's roommate and bullied him at the orphanage. Sinister always intervened when anyone came close to adopting Scott. As a teenager, Scott began to suffer from severe headaches, and he was sent to a specialist, who was again Mr. Sinister in disguise, who provided him with lenses made of ruby quartz. Soon after, Scott's mutant power erupted from his eyes as an uncontrollable blast of optic force. The blast demolished a crane, causing it to drop its payload toward a terrified crowd. Scott saved everyone by obliterating the object with another blast, but the bystanders believed that he had tried to kill them. Later, Scott was drawn to a mutant criminal named Jack Winters, also known as the Jack O'Diamonds. Jack sought to use Scott's newfound talent in his crimes and physically abused the young boy when he initially refused. Jack abused Scott for some time, but Scott eventually managed to escape. Later, Scott starts going to school, and he first appears in a high school Spanish class. While messing with his glasses, the teacher orders him to sit up and take them off, to which he responds that he has a headache. The teacher then states he can wear glasses after school in detention. In detention, he is seen writing on the board when Sabretooth taps on the window. He attempts to escape, but is soon caught after being chased through the hallways and his glasses fall off, causing him to unleash his optic blast that destroys three levels of the school. William Stryker then came and took him, injecting him with a tranquilizer. He was imprisoned at Stryker's mutant prison base along with Emma and other young mutants. His power, along with theirs, was used to power Deadpool. Later, while in the compound to kill Stryker and Sabretooth, Wolverine uses his claws and destroys all the cages holding the young mutant prisoners. Scott escapes the compound along with Emma, Elizabeth Braddock, and the other mutants, using his optic blast to kill guards who are shooting at them. He is guided by a telepathic voice in his head, which leads him and the others to a passage outside, and the mutants are greeted by Charles Xavier, who is waiting with a helicopter. Scott and the mutants go to Xavier's school for the gifted, and Scott soon comes to form a deep bond with Xavier, seeing him as a father and mentor. Scott and Emma Silverfox also became close, but she eventually left the school wanting to see the world. Scott eventually met Jean Grey and begins a romantic relationship with her. He also meets and befriends Storm and Beast and becomes both the field leader of the X-Men and a teacher at Xavier's school. After a few years, Scott and Storm are sent to rescue Logan and Rogue from Sabretooth, who had been sent by Magneto. When he arrives on the scene, Scott puts his hand on his visor and shoots a powerful optic blast at Sabretooth, knocking the feral mutant back. He then uses his beams to release Rogue, who had become trapped inside Wolverine's caravan. Cyclops and Storm then grab Rogue and Wolverine and run away seconds before the truck explodes and bring the latter pair back to Xavier's school. At the school, after Logan escaped the infirmary and entered a class, Professor X was teaching. Xavier introduces Storm and Cyclops to Wolverine. Scott sends out his hand to shake hands with Logan, but Logan does not respond. Xavier tells him that they saved his life, and just then, Jean enters. Xavier introduces her as well and then tells Logan that he is in his school for gifted youngsters and that he is safe there from Magneto. Logan asks, what's a Magneto? And Xavier answers that Magneto is a very powerful mutant and that the mutant who attacked him is an associate of Magneto's called Sabretooth. Logan thinks the whole thing is ridiculous and starts leaving, 
roughly telling Scott to get out of his way. Xavier then tells him that he can help him figure out who he is. Telepathically, Xavier says to him that it's been 15 years since Logan lost his memory, and shows that his telepathy can help Logan remember his past. Intrigued, Logan asks about their school and what this place truly was. Then after Jean runs some tests on Wolverine, she explains to Professor X, Cyclops, and Storm her findings about Wolverine. She explains that a supposedly indestructible metal called adamantium is fused to his entire skeleton. Ororo asks, how could he have survived a procedure like that? And Jean explains that his mutation is a healing factor, which also makes his age impossible to determine, and he could very well be older than the professor. Storm asks who did this to him, and she says that he doesn't know, nor does he remember anything that happened before it. Xavier muses that it must have been experimentation on mutants. Cyclops asks him what he thinks Magneto wants with him, and Xavier says that he's not entirely sure that it's him who Magneto wants. Later that night, Scott catches Wolverine talking with Jean trying to get her to read his mind. She leaves, but Scott and Logan have a conversation. Wolverine tries to joke about Scott being jealous, and the two taunt each other about Jean and about how Scott had to rescue Logan. Scott makes a comment on how Logan doesn't take anything serious. They then argue about seeing actual combat, and Scott insults Logan about not knowing his past, and then closes the door telling him to stay away from Jean. Sometime later, after Wolverine accidentally stabbed Rogue through the chest, and hysterically called out for help, she used her powers to absorb his healing factor. Aurora, Jean, Scott, and some kids enter just in time to see her wounds heal, and Logan pass out. Jean and Scott rush to help Logan, and Rogue starts apologizing and saying that it was an accident. She leaves the room and the other children step away from her panicked. The next morning in the underground part of the mansion, Xavier and Cyclops are trying to figure out what Magneto wants with Wolverine. Xavier picks up that Scott does not like Logan. Just then, Logan and Aurora walk in, and Logan asks where Rogue is. Xavier, after a short mind scan, says that she is gone. A few minutes later, Xavier, Scott, Jean, Aurora, and Logan enter a secured room, and Xavier welcomes Logan to Cerebro. Cerebro is a big round room with a bridge leading to the machine. Xavier explains that Cerebro amplifies his powers, allowing him to track mutants through large distances. That is how he intends to find Rogue. Logan asks why he just does not use it to find Magneto, and Xavier tells him that Magneto somehow found a way to shield himself from the machine. Logan asks how would he know how to do that, and Xavier says that he helped him build it. Then he puts the Cerebro helmet on his head, and after the other's exit, starts the search. Outside Cerebro, Logan asks Jean if she ever used Cerebro, and she answers she has not, because it takes a certain degree of control, and for someone like her, it is dangerous. Inside, Xavier manages to locate Rogue at the train station after a short search. Logan starts leaving to find her, but Xavier stops him, saying that if he will leave the mansion, Magneto will capture him. Instead, he sends Cyclops and Storm to find her. In the garage, Scott and Oro prepare to leave, but Scott notices that his motorcycle is missing. So when Storm and Cyclops arrive at the train station, Storm goes to check with the ticket agent as Scott looks around. While at the train station, Scott is greeted by a young boy who thinks his visor is cool, and Scott smiles back at the boy. The boy's mother, however, noticing Scott's visor and presuming he's a mutant out of fear, she rushes herself and her son away from Scott. Storm gives the ticket agent a description of Rogue, but before he can tell her if he saw her, Sabretooth shows up, grabs her throat, lifts her, and growls. Cyclops rushes to help her, but Toad, who is clinging to the wall, sends out his long tongue and removes his visor, making him shoot a powerful optic blast at the ceiling, accidentally breaking a hole through it. Everybody run hysterically as Scott shuts his eyes and Aurora almost loses consciousness. Back at the mansion after Senator Kelly arrives and Professor Xavier reads the Senator's mind about the machine Magneto has built. Xavier then explains to everyone that Magneto uses a machine that produces radiation that triggers mutation in ordinary human beings. Jean continues, saying that the mutation is unnatural and Kelly's body is rejecting it as his cells are breaking down. Scott asks what the radiation will do to mutants and Xavier answers that nothing, but it could seriously harm humans. Logan asks what Magneto wants with Rogue, and Xavier answers that he does not know. Annoyed, Logan turns to leave again, but then Scott finds the answer. The machine drew its power from Magneto, and it nearly killed him. He deduces that Magneto wants Rogue to absorb his power so she can do it in his place, allowing him to live. Scott and Logan start to argue about the situation and what they should do. Storm enters Xavier's study just in time to break an argument between Scott and Logan, and informs them that Senator Kelly is dead. Xavier tells them that he will go find Rogue and orders the men to settle it. But Professor X becomes poisoned when using Cerebro due to Mystique tampering with it. 
Later, Professor X is lying on the lab's table, the Cyclops and Wolverine looking at him. Jean checks what is wrong with Cerebro and removes the green liquid. The professor in an unconscious state greatly affects Scott as he sees Charles like a father. In the lab, Scott tells the unconscious professor how much he appreciates all that Xavier's done for him, and that if anything happens, he will take care of the school. Meanwhile, in Cerebro, Jean decides to try and use it herself for the first time. Scott leaves the lab and sees Jean with the helmet on her head. Knowing how dangerous it is to her, he runs towards Cerebro, but the door closes before he gets in. Inside, the mental pressure makes John collapse and the door opens, allowing Scott to enter in. He holds Jean in his arms, begging her to give some sign that she's alright. She stirs and tells him that she knows where Magneto is going. So Cyclops, Jean, Storm, and Wolverine discuss their battle plans. They understand Magneto's plan now completely, and they know Magneto is not aware of the fact that his machine kills. They know that if he gives Rogue enough power, he'll kill everybody in New York City. So they plan to land on Liberty Island and spoil his plans. Logan asks what about Harbor Patrol, and Scott answers that if they have anything that can find their jet, they deserve to catch them. When they board the Blackbird, Wolverine makes an insulting comment about the black leather uniforms, wondering how they actually go outside in them. Cyclops has a witty retort wondering if he'd prefer yellow spandex. They leave in the Blackbird as the students watch in awe. Scott flies the jet, and when they reach the bridge, they land on the water, with storm creating fog as cover. The Blackbird lands and the X-Men get out. They look up and see the machine on top of the torch. As they pass through the metal detector, it beeps on Logan, but he pops in claws in it. Cyclops turns towards him with an annoyed expression, and Wolverine sheathes the two outer claws, essentially flipping him off. Scott smiles and Jean rolls her eyes. They start walking carefully in the hall, but Toad and Mystique are already waiting for them. Logan senses pick on them, and he tells the others that there is someone there, but he does not know where, and says, keep your eye open, as a joke at Scott's expense. Out of nowhere, another Wolverine shows up and starts battling Logan, and the others aren't sure anymore who's real and who's Mystique. Toad hops on the other three and throws all of them to the floor. With his deadly speed, strong legs, and long tongue, he succeeds in knocking back Scott and Aurora as they are not ready, and Scott gets trapped behind a steel door. Toad incapacitates Jean by spitting fast-hardening slime over her mouth and nose, preventing her from breathing or calling for help. Using his optic blast, Cyclops blasts his way through the barrier Toad locked him behind. Scott then finds Jean frantically trying to peel the hardened slime from her face and screaming behind the slime. Scott rushes to Jean and calms her down. Setting his visor on low, he blasts the slime off her face before she suffocates. After Wolverine defeated Mystique, he finds Scott and Jean, and Scott nearly blasts him, unsure if it's really him or Mystique in disguise. Scott tells Logan to prove that it is really him, to which Logan simply answers, you're a dick, which Scott thinks is proof enough. Storm shows up upstairs, and they follow her up. They see the torch, and suddenly Logan tells them all to get out of there. Cyclops asks what the problem is, and Logan says that he cannot move. He floats in the air and gets pinned to the wall. Metal pieces fly and hook the others to the walls, despite Scott's attempts to blast them. Cyclops is hooked in a way that his visor is directed at Jean's head, preventing him from shooting. Magneto floats down and aims Logan's hands to his chest, preventing him from popping his claws. Sabretooth joins them and removes Scott's visor, forcing him to close his eyes. Scott orders Storm to fry him, but Magneto reminds him that it's not a good idea to send a bolt of lightning into a huge copper conductive. Magneto explains his motives to the X-Men, and then they hear Rogue crying for help. Wolverine tells him that if he was really so righteous, it would have been him in the machine. But without responding, Magneto just flies up to the machine as Rogue continues to scream for help. After Wolverine breaks free and engages Sabretooth, he falls down and sticks his claws to the wall to hang on it, almost killing Scott and Jean who are at the other side of the wall. Sabretooth thinks he is dead and walks to Storm, only for Wolverine to jump back in with Silop's visor. Jean tells Scott that when she tells him, he should open his eyes. Jean telekinetically places the visor on Scott's eyes and, and he shoots, blasting Sabretooth through the wall. Magneto watches Sabretooth crashing on the boat as Logan releases the others. He asks Cyclops if he can blast the machine, but Scott says that that will kill her. Cyclops asks Storm if she can lift him up, but she says she cannot control it like that. Then Logan tells her to fly him because if he will not make it, at least Cyclops could still blast it. Cyclops agrees and orders Jean to try to steady Logan with her telekinesis. With combined efforts, the two manage to direct Logan to the top of the machine. The energy field starts spreading and Wolverine jumps inside. 
He tries to slash Rogue's chains, but Magneto stops him with his power. Cyclops puts his hand to his visor, but Jean asks him to wait. Cyclops sees a chance and decides to take, managing to blast Magneto, thus allowing a Wolverine to destroy Magneto machine and save everyone in New York. Later in a museum in New York, the students of Xavier's school are on a field trip. Jean calls one of the students to get back to the others, and smiles at Scott, who is across the room. Suddenly Jean starts hearing many voices in her head, the random thoughts of the people around her. It gets louder and louder until Cyclops notices and asks her if she's okay. She answers that she's fine, it's just a headache, but he knows better, because ever since Liberty Island she's been different. She says that her telepathy has been off lately, she can't seem to focus and she can hear everything. He says that it's not just her telepathy, a month earlier she had to concentrate just to levitate a book or a chair across the room. Now, when she has a nightmare, their entire bedroom shakes. She tells him that her dreams are getting worse. She keeps feeling something terrible is about to happen. He hugs her and says that he would never let anything happen to her. Storm approaches them and asks if they have seen Bobby or Rogue. Jean scans and says that something's happening in the food court. Soon the three join the rest of the X-Men and the students in the food court as Professor X froze everybody at the museums. A news report on television tells about the mutant attack on the White House, and Cyclops says that he thinks it's time to leave. The professor agrees, and everybody starts moving once more, with the students and the X-Men gone. Later in Xavier's study at the Institute, the X-Men are discussing the attack on the White House. Cyclops thinks Magneto is behind it, but Jean and the professor disagree, thinking he won't be able to organize something like this from prison, not to mention it will only hurt his goals. Storm says the government will probably react by reintroducing the Mutant Registration Act, but Xavier fears it could be much worse. They could declare a state of emergency, placing every mutant in the country under arrest. Jean raises the question of the attacker, and the professor says they have to get to him before the authorities. He's been trying to track him using Cerebro, but his movements are too sporadic. He tells them that when he has the exact location of this mutant, he wants Jean and Aurora to pick him up. Wolverine returns a short time later and starts flirting with Jean when Scott walks down the staircase and asks him if he found what he was looking for. Logan answers him, and Jean kisses Scott goodbye, leaving towards the hangar bay. With Jean gone, Logan tells Scott that his bike needs gas as he tosses him the keys. Scott replies that Logan can fill it up himself, tossing them back to him. Later, Cyclops accompanies Xavier to Eric Lenshare's plastic prison as Charles wants to question Eric on the White House attack. While waiting for Xavier, Lady Deathstrike enters the plastic hall where Scott is and fires at him with a plastic gun. Scott shoots an optic blast at her and then beats the two guards. He runs to blast the door to the cell and free the professor, but Yuriko gets back up and leaps at him with her metallic sounding body, knocking him out. She takes both Summers and Xavier to William Stryker's facility at Alkali Lake. After brainwashing him, Stryker has Scott wait for the X-Men. Then, he finds Magneto, Mystique, and Jean in a crossing hallway. Cyclops, under mind control, prepares to shoot at Magneto and Mystique. Jean uses her telekinesis to shove them out of the way in the last second and yells to them to go and says she'll take care of him. Magneto agrees and tells Mystique that this is one lover's quarrel they cannot get involved in. Jean uses a telekinetic blast to throw Scott away to a lower level and redirect one of his optic blasts. Worried that he's hurt, she runs after him and calls his name. Jean was looking for Scott at the level she threw him to, but he was hiding not far from her and prepares to shoot. He fires a powerful optic blast at her as she asks him not to do it. Suddenly the Phoenix Force takes over and Jean's eyes glow orange again, and she sends the optic blast away at the wall telekinetically, cracking and breaking pieces of the dam. Scott, whose mind control wore off when Jean sent his blast back at him, walks over to Jean who's lying on the floor and hugs her and kisses her. He apologizes and says that he saw her, but he couldn't stop it and that he loves her. Her leg is injured. And then she senses telepathically that something's wrong. In a hall, Jean senses that they're too late. And just then both her and Scott scream and fall to their knees as the effect of Dark Cerebro kicks in. But Magneto succeeds in opening the doors on time and Cerebro stops working. Storm, Nightcrawler, and the kids get to Cerebro's doors and Jean and Cyclops get there right after him. Jean scans telepathically and says that the professor is still in there with another mutant and he's trapped in some sort of illusion. 
Suddenly, she realizes what Magneto has done and says that Magneto reversed Cerebro. It's not targeting mutants anymore, it's targeting everyone else. Cyclops prepares to blast the doors, but Jean says that the professor is connected to Cerebro. Opening the doors can kill him and everyone his mind is connected to. Storm tells Kurt that she needs him to take her inside. Scott asks who is Kurt, and Kurt starts introducing himself, but Aurora interrupts, saying he's a teleporter. Kurt tells Aurora again that if he can't see where he's going, it could be dangerous, and she says she has faith in him. Nightcrawler hugs Storm and starts praying, and then they disappear in a purple cloud of smoke and reappear inside Cerebro, after Nightcrawler and Storm eventually succeed in rescuing Xavier. All the mutants run through the halls to the spillway, believing it to be their only escape. They get to the doors, but Logan pops out of a tunnel and pops his claws in a fuse box, closing the door before they'll get caught in the flood. He tells them that they don't want to go that way, and then water bursts through the cracks to confirm. Logan leads his friends through the other way out. The mutants rush out to the snow. To their shock and horror, the helicopter is already gone, taken by Magneto. Suddenly, the jet shows up spinning uncontrollably in the air. Rogue is piloting and makes an emergency landing, crashing in the snow. In the jet, Xavier tells Scott that they've got to get to Washington, as he fears this has gone beyond their league. Wolverine enters and hands Artie to Bobby. Jean asks him if he's okay, and he says that he is now. Scott and Aurora panic to realize that something's wrong and they can't take off. Rogue asks if anyone has seen John, and Jean answers after a short telepathic scan that he's with Magneto, to everyone's disappointment. Just then, the jet loses the power, and then the water bursts out through the dam again. Jean, in the back, realizes she has to do something, as she's their last hope. She looks at all her friends and leaves the jet without them noticing. After a few seconds though, Xavier notices and calls her name, alarming Logan and Scott. Xavier says she's outside, and Logan and Scott rush to the exit. Jean telekinetically closes the door, keeping him inside, and activates the jet. Scott yells at Aurora not to take off, but Jean does it for her. Jean uses one hand to keep the water from drowning the jet, and the other to free the jet's leg from the snow. Scott watches in misery, and Logan orders Kurt to get her, but Kurt says she's not letting him. As her last words of goodbye, Jean uses her telepathy to speak through Xavier's mouth, saying she knows what she's doing, and this is the only way. Scott begs her not to do this, and she says goodbye. Her body and eyes glow orange as she manages to release the jet's leg and lift it in the air. She releases her telekinetic grip, letting the water drown her freely, and everybody grieves about her. Scott falls crying on Logan to the size of the tragedy. Everybody's overwhelmed, their throats choking with sorrow, and the jets flying above what is now a large sea. A deeply saddened and angry Scott joins Professor X, Storm, Iceman, Rogue, Nightcrawler, and Wolverine as they break into the White House to talk with the President and prevent a mutant human war. Professor X greets the President good morning and calms him down, saying they won't harm anyone. The President asks who they are and Xavier answers that they're mutants and his name is Charles Xavier. Rogue puts some documents down on the President's desk and Xavier explains that they were taken from the private office of William Stryker. The President asks how they got it and the Professor answers that he knows a little girl who can walk through walls. The president says that he's never seen this information, and Xavier says he knows that. The president says he doesn't respond well to threats, and Xavier says that this is not a threat, this is an opportunity. There are forces in this world, he says, both human and mutant alike, who believe that a war is coming. As he can see from the files, some had already tried to start one, and there have been casualties, losses, on both sides. He ends by telling the president that what he's about to tell the world is true. This is a moment, a moment to repeat the mistakes of the past or to work together for a better future. They're there to stay. The next move is his. Logan says that they'll be watching as lightning brightens all their faces and suddenly they disappear and all the lights turn on again. The president is silent, not sure what to tell the cameras. In Xavier's room, Scott is looking out the window. Xavier says that even when Jean was a student, she was always hesitant about her powers, always looking to others, fearing that in some way she was left behind. Scott asks in a choked throat if they could have done more to save her, and Xavier says that in the past, she may have let them. Logan can't understand why she left the plane, and Xavier says that she made a choice. Students walk into the classroom, including Artie, Jones, Bobby, Moonstar, and Jubilee. Logan and Scott leave, and Logan tells Scott that Jean did make a choice, and it was Scott. But Scott just walks away, not finding that much comfort in it. Then, months after Jean's death, 
Scott had fallen into a deep depression, neglecting his duties as a teacher and X-Man. Up in his room, Scott sits in the dark on his bed. Memories of the recent death of Jean at Alkali Lake torture his mind. He whispers her name and hears her response in his head. In the hallway, Scott walks past Logan. Wolverine tells Cyclops that they were waiting for him downstairs, but he didn't show up. Scott asks why does he care, and Logan answers that he had to cover for him. Scott says he didn't ask him to, but Wolverine tells him the professor did. Cyclops tries to brush Logan off and walk away, but Logan holds him and says he knows how he feels about Jean's death, but maybe it's time for them to move on. Scott just walks away, telling Logan that not everybody heals as fast as him. On a road in Canada, Cyclops is riding his motorcycle to Alkali Lake, the place where Jean recently died saving everyone else's lives. He stops his motorbike and gets off it, again hearing Jean's voice whispering his name in his head. Tortured by his grief, he walks to the edge of a small cliff over the water. Her voice gets louder and louder, and Scott, thinking his mind is playing tricks on him, yells at the voice to stop. The voice doesn't stop, but keeps getting louder. Scott loses control of his rage and screams at the voices to stop with all his might, and then shoots a powerful optic blast at the water. Calming down a bit, he stops the blast, drops to his knees, and puts his ruby glasses back on. Looking up at the water, he is shocked to see that the waves created by his blast made a small whirlpool. The whirlpool gets bigger and bigger and louder and louder, and the amazed Scott stands up, staring at it in disbelief. Suddenly, a huge splash of water comes out of the whirlpool, dropping Scott on his back on the hard rocks. He slowly sits back up, putting his hand in front of his face to protect his eyes from some strange blinding light in front of him. Out of the light, a figure emerges. Scott gets up, confused, and before his astonished eyes stands Jean Grey. She says his name, and he asks her in shock how this is possible. She says she doesn't know, and he rushes to hold her and hug her. He strokes her hair, and she says she wants to see his eyes. She reaches her hand to take his glasses off, but he stops her, asking what she's doing. She asks him to trust her, saying she can control it now. She takes off his glasses, but he closes his eyes, still too frightened of hurting her. She tells him to open them, and he slowly and carefully opens his eyes. At first, his eyes glow red, but no optic blasts are shot. Then slowly, the red glow fades, and his eyes appear in their natural color. Overwhelmed by all this, Scott grabs her and kisses her. They share a long, dramatic kiss, but then she opens her eyes, and something strange happens to him. In Xavier's school, the professor senses Cyclops' distress. Telepathically, Scott's name is heard all over the school. Clearly, something is horribly wrong. Wolverine and Storm run through the halls hysterically to Xavier's office, not knowing what the hell happened. They burst open his door and ask if he's okay, and he tells them to get to Alkali Lake. Wolverine and Storm return to the location soon after, and Logan can only find Scott's glasses. After getting Jean back to the mansion in the infirmary, Logan, realizing that the professor was right, and that the woman in front of him is not the Jean he knows, and asks her where's Scott. For a moment, Jean snaps back to her usual self, asking Logan where she is. Logan tells her she's in the mansion and says he needs to know what happened to Scott. Confused, Jean remains silent and just looks around the room. Logan holds out Scott's glasses and repeats the question. Seeing the glasses, Jean starts to remember how she came out of the water earlier and saw Scott. She closes her eyes and suddenly, the room begins to shake and the glasses break to pieces in Logan's hand. Storm and Professor X make it to the infirmary, where Logan tells them that he thinks Jean killed Scott, but Storm says that's not possible. Much later, Jean kills Xavier and is herself killed by Logan. Then on the mansion's front lawn, Storm and Kitty stand in front of the two graves of Scott Summers and Jean Grey, lying next to Xavier's grave, three great losses that the X-Men are left to mourn. Then, in the revised timeline after Wolverine changes the past events, Cyclops gets to live a different life. He grows up differently and was unaware of his mutant powers. In 1983, Scott was in school learning about the incident in Paris. During class, his eyes start to bother him, causing him to discomfort a fellow student who mistakes that Scott is hitting on his girlfriend. Scott then insults the boy and asks the teacher if he could go to the bathroom. The student follows Scott and is ready to fight him. But just then, his powers are activated, causing him to unleash an optic blast that destroys the bathroom. Scott's older brother, Alex Summers, returns home upon the request of their parents who tell him about the incident at school. Alex goes to see Scott, who is hiding away in his room. Alex tries to help, but Scott says they have nothing in common, and he's done with school. But hearing this convinces Alex that Xavier can help him control his power. Scott is then brought to the Xavier's school by Alex. 
At the school, he is forced to wear a blindfold to stop his abilities. So he bumps into Jean Grey, causing her to drop her books, which she stops in the air with telekinesis. He is guided by his brother to meet with Charles Xavier. They, along with Hank McCoy, go for a walk around the campus as Charles explains the school. Outside, Charles tells Scott to use his abilities to see how powerful it is, and Scott blasts apart a tree that Charles's grandfather planted. Scott wonders if this will cause him to be expelled, but Charles is proud and accepts him into the school. Alex and Scott unknowingly share their last moment together when Alex leaves with Charles to see Moira. Alex tells Scott to be good while he's gone, and later in the car, Charles tells him that Scott reminds him of a young Alex. While at the school, Scott befriends Jean Grey and they have a mutual attraction over both having uncontrollable powers. Hank McCoy makes Scott special ruby quartz glasses that will block his abilities, for which he is very grateful. Later upon learning Kurt doesn't know American culture, Scott leads the four young mutants to cut class and drive to the mall using Xavier's car keys, which Scott stole. At the mall, they go shopping for records. Meanwhile, Jean and Scott get to bond over mutual respect for singer Dazzler. When they returned, Cyclops discovered that his brother had been killed when Apocalypse destroyed the X-Mansion. When William Stryker arrives, he and the military take Moira, Charles, Raven, Hank, and Peter, while Scott, Jean, and Kurt hide. They sneak aboard the helicopter, carrying the captured mutants, and it takes them to Alkali Lake. While on the helicopter, Scott mourns Alex and claims he should have been the one to die, claiming Alex was going to be the one who did something special with his life. Jean understands the situation and comforts Scott. Then after arriving at the facility, the three run into Logan, who has already gone through the adamantium process, and release him. Logan proceeds to slaughter Stryker's men before escaping, and Scott hopes that it'll be the last time they ever see Logan. When Scott blasts through the walls of their cage, the three then proceed to rescue Hank, Moira, Raven, and Peter. The groups escape with one of Stryker's jets and don battle suits before heading to Cairo. After arriving, Jean determines that Apocalypse is going to transfer his consciousness into Xavier and claims they must rescue him to stop Apocalypse. While Mystique and Quicksilver go to try and convince Magneto to stop, Cyclops, alongside Beast and Jean, fight off Storm and Psylocke. Nightcrawler manages to save Charles, and the group attempts to escape, only to be stopped by Archangel and Psylocke, who cause the jet to crash. Xavier then enters a psychic battle with Apocalypse, while Cyclops and Beast alongside a reformed Storm and Magneto battle Apocalypse's physical body. Cyclops uses his full optic blast against Apocalypse, but he cannot penetrate his force field. Apocalypse uses his powers to fuse Scott into the wall, but he is rescued by Beast. Apocalypse's overwhelming power proves to be too much until Jean, now having unlocked the power of the Phoenix, joins the fray and vaporizes Apocalypse, thus killing him and ending the threat. So, Scott and the group return home, and Jean and Magneto repair the mansion. While standing out on the school lawn, Hank approaches Scott with a visor to replace his glasses. He built special technology in it, allowing Scott to control the intensity of his beam. Scott is grateful, but hopes that the kids won't now call him Cyclops. After some time, Scott alongside Storm, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler, Beast, and Quicksilver make up the new X-Men, wearing new colorful uniforms. Under the watch of Mystique and Professor X, they begin training, fighting Sentinels in the Danger Room. Nine years later in 1992, Professor X is now an advisor to the President of the United States, as he and the X-Men are revered as worldwide superheroes. Xavier and Hank McCoy witness the Space Shuttle Endeavor encountering problems in space. Xavier is then telephoned by the president to provide assistance to the astronauts. Xavier dispatches Beast, Mystique, Quicksilver, Storm, Nightcrawler, Jean Grey, and Cyclops to head to space, with Beast piloting the X-Jet. Cyclops uses his optic blasts to stabilize the ship as Nightcrawler transports himself, Quicksilver, and later Jean onto the ship. Cyclops subsequently believes Jean to be dead after she is exposed to the cosmic force they believe to be a solar flare, but is overjoyed to see that she is still alive. After the astronauts are saved and brought back to Earth safely, Cyclops asks Jean if she is well, and she claims she is better than ever. Then during a celebration party, Cyclops is hurt when Jean unleashes a psychic attack. Later that night, Cyclops attempts to check on her, only to be rendered unconscious by Jean once again. As Jean leaves the X-Mansion to locate her father, Cyclops joins the X-Men on their trip to Red Hook to bring her home. After Jean proves to be a hostile force, Storm and Beast attempt to attack her, but Cyclops knocks Storm aside, and Professor X mentally freezes Beast. 
Mystique decides not to fight Jean and instead calm her down. As she approaches her, Jean notifies Mystique to get away from her, and this causes Jean to unleash a psychic wave that propels Mystique back into the damaged houses, impaling her on wooden pieces and killing her as Jean flies away. Back at the X-Mansion, Cyclops informs Xavier that Hank has left. Using Cerebro, Xavier realizes that Hank has gone to see Magneto and that they are planning to kill Jean to avenge Mystique. Cyclops enlists Storm and Nightcrawler to join them and fights Beast, Magneto, Selene, and Ariki on the streets of New York. He is able to save Jean from Vuk, although he is eventually rendered unconscious by the US military, who place mutant ability dispersing collars on him. On the train headed to a mutant internment facility, Cyclops convinced Beast and Magneto that Mystique would not have wanted them to kill Jean. As the Dabari attacks the train, Cyclops is freed from his restraints and fights the Dabari while supporting Professor X. He witnesses the Dabari's demise at the hands of Jean, who flies into space with Vuk before exploding and seemingly killing them both. Then after returning to the X-Mansion, Cyclops placed the new board for the school, now renamed Jean Grey's School for Gifted Youngsters on the front gate. At some point in history after the battle with Apocalypse, the X-Men and their exploits became idolized and eventually merchandised, becoming famous and part of pop culture, even becoming action figures. The adventures of the X-Men were loosely adapted into a series of comic books called X-Men Comics, which featured Cyclops, Rogue, Storm, and Colossus, among others. Wolverine was not a fan of the comics, due to their inaccuracy and lack of consequences. In 2028, Charles Xavier developed Alzheimer's and suffered a massive seizure that injured 600 people and killed seven mutants, including several members of the X-Men. It is unknown if Cyclops was among those who were either killed or injured. But in my opinion, it's very possible that Cyclops got killed during that seizure. I think it's possible because Cyclops and Xavier were very close and had a father-son-like relationship. So I think when Xavier was sick, Cyclops must have accompanied him and he must have been near Xavier when he suffered the massive seizure and the impact probably killed him. However, this is my opinion and I would also love to hear your thoughts on what you think happened with Cyclops. So yeah, that's all for this video and thanks for watching.